first of all, it's a small body guitar like you would see on a, on a traditional guitar from maybe 80 years ago. Yeah. Um, the standards, you know, the, the Martin uh, naming system is basically what everybody uses as a standard. So this is pretty much a double O size guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it's got modern features like the armrest. It has a sound port. Um, What's the wood? This guitar is spalted mango. Spalted mango. Spalted mango. Beautiful. And the top is uh, bear claw Sitka spruce. So bear claw refers to these horizontal striations in here. So these are variations in the grain, and they make it shimmer. Hmm. And um, what about the neck? The neck in this case is um, Honduran mahogany mm -hmm. with a couple of black uh, veneer pin lines through it. Mm -hmm. But also the neck is going to have a non-standard, sort of more modern, uh, what they call a fan fret fretboard. Mm -hmm. You can see how it's splayed. And uh, the bridge is also going to be at a diagonal here on this guitar. So What's gonna, the point of that? Well, what you get is a much longer bass string than treble strings. So for example, a harp or inside a piano, you've got longer bass strings than treble strings. So on any instrument where all the strings are the same length, it's actually a compromise in sound. So people have been uh, experimenting with what they call a multi-scalular fretboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this one's going to range from 25 to 27 and a half inches. So it's quite drastic, actually. Mm. Cool. What are we here? Okay, so this is another double O size guitar. We've got a Macassar ebony back, a uh, flame maple mm -hmm. uh, binding, mm -hmm. Sitka spruce top, and then I've also used uh, Macassar and, and maple in the rosette. And then the neck. It's sitting over there, it seems to be all, uh, it's all mahogany. So there you go. Are native woods? Yeah, so all three of these are native woods. So we've got uh, honey locusts here. Beautiful. With, yeah, and you can see the uh, joined on the sapwood there with the silver sapwood. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay, and uh, this one here is, uh, met, is uh, b sorry, black locust. Yeah. So both of these are from species that are closely related to uh, rosewood and to koa. Mm -hmm which are two of the standard guitar woods. So these are two woods that are in the same family, very similar qualities. Basically, guitar builders don't know about these woods. And this one seems so beautiful. And then this, this is Manitoba maple. And uh, woodworkers consider Manitoba maple basically junk wood, but you know what? It's still a maple. It's considerably harder than is mahogany or some of the other guitar woods. It's still harder than walnut. And, uh, you know, there's tons of tone there. It's a Sitka spruce top, and uh, so there's no reason that uh, Manitoba maple shouldn't make a wonderful guitar. It's, it's beautiful. Looks, looks nice. What's really this? Is. Yeah, so this is uh, um, white ash. So again, white ash is not a wood that people consider building acoustic guitars out of, yet ash is one of the standard woods for building most gu electric guitars. It's also a wood that you would be using for anything that has to be steam bent, like Windsor back chairs and lacrosse rackets, etc. So obviously on a guitar you have to be able to bend it. Mm -hmm. So you would think that it should be a wood that people would consider. And tone-wise, and the Sitka spruce top, and you can hear, I mean, there's tons of power, there's tons of sustain on that guitar. So, you know, once I get the strings on, then the real judgment will be, but so far, this thing is coming along. It seems like it's going to be a great guitar. What we got here? So this is Paduke, mm -hmm. and this is from East Africa, and this happens to also be another legume. So the whole guitar world is basically uh, looking at alternate woods because many of the woods are no longer available, mm -hmm. or the traditional woods. They're turning most of the woods that they're turning to happen to be legumes because they all have very similar qualities. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one particularly, I mean, is flame paduke, which is, you know, unusual to have flame in the It's paduke. got such a red, rooty tone, too. Yeah. Now, this is going to actually darken with age over the years. Is that because of the French polish? Or? No, it's the, uh, there's oils in the paduke that actually make it darken, mm -hmm. similar to the way the cherry becomes richer. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I put paduke on the rosette and on the uh, head, headstock, etc. as well. Yeah. These yeah. Are these are external moles. Mm -hmm. I actually have them uh, designed so that you can split them in half and use them for clamping the wood when I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. the, uh, so this wood. tool is a spoke shave. So traditionally you would use this for shaping furniture legs or canoe paddles. In my case I use it for uh, shaping the necks of the acoustic guitar. Yeah. Uh, this, this one is more like a file. Uh, I would actually be able to work down through the different grits. So basically there's another file that I would Use, utilize a lot in shaping the neck and the heel and different parts. Yeah. 
the Americans are getting kind of crazy with um, not allowing a lot of stuff past their borders. Mm -hmm. So this guy deals with Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for instance, these are pre-cut into uh, position marks. Mm -hmm. These are all pre-cut into these uh, straight little sections. They just happen to be taped together. Mm -hmm. And you would use these for doing the rosette on a guitar or possibly the border on the outside. Mm -hmm. These all happen to be 1 16th of an inch wide. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, these ones, you could inlay them like that if you want to because they look pretty spectacular, but in fact, I would be cutting my shapes out of those for most of my inlays. Yeah. What with the inlay? So that's, that's why I've got this sheet sitting here now. We need to cut a, Tony and I need to uh, cut a strip off of this mm -hmm. and uh, to make more for his guitar over there. Mm -hmm. But basically what I have is... So that gives you your stripping for the... There we go. Yeah. And that's a 1 16th, or what is it? This? Or is it's it just 20? a few... It's, no, it's just a... Uh, Width-wise. It's probably uh, not even a 32nd of an inch. Yeah. Oh, you mean the thickness this way? Yeah, this way it's, uh, I don't know, about 3 three 32nd or so, something like that. Yeah. Hmm. So this, sure. could you bring it around, that could be a component of a rosette of a, around a sound hole. Yeah, so a lot of people are unaware of the fact that a guitar has to have some reinforcement underneath the uh, inside the neck to re or to balance against the strings. So this is that reinforcement, this is the truss rod, and that gets built right into the guitar like that and sits in here under the fretboard with an axis point somewhere. There's different ways that you can put it in. In my case, I put them in the front right there, mm -hmm. and that takes an Allen key. And this thing needs to be adjusted, usually once a year at least, mm -hmm. to counteract the pull of the strings. And if you use a different gauge of strings or readjust the string height, then you also have to readjust the tension on the truss rod. So that's a normal part of guitar maintenance. And what is that bass wood there? Is that? Uh, oh, this happens to be a maple neck yeah. for an acoustic guitar. That hasn't been shaped, but this is no, where this, you're going this, with this, it. This is a raw blank for, for a, an acoustic guitar. Yeah. Swing arm, and it just floats just barely above the sandpaper. And what you do with double stick tape is you put a fretboard on here and you swing it across this. Oh, and that's how you get the shape. And it's probably the best way of making a compound radius fretboard, and that's what I'm using here. Hmm. So this guitar mm -hmm. happens to be hard maple. It's also got flame in it, mm -hmm. but it's also spalted. So that means it came from either a dying or a dead tree. Mm -hmm. And one of the very first things that happens when the tree starts to decay is bacteria will get in there and start to break down the wood. Uh, and you get all these dis different discolorations. So that gives you the pattern, like this, for example. Yeah, so there's there's superimposed patterns. There's a the grain pattern, yeah. but there's also the spalt, and yeah. then in, in addition, there's the flame in here. Yeah. Uh, so if you arrest the spalt, or if you arrest the decay, before the wood actually physically breaks down, then you can you know, get patterns like this. It's beautiful. Basically, all of this is homemade binding material. Okay, why did I use ebony binding? Well, I've got these amazingly thin pin black uh, black lines from the spalt in here, mm -hmm. and they're already black, so it's natural to go with the black in this guitar. Yeah. Right? Is that around the, 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 the face again? Sorry. Here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's more spalt there. Yeah. And then also, I happen to use it. Oh, wrong neck. Uh, here. Where the hell's the neck for it? There it is. Okay. Look at that. So that's a headstock. And then, gorgeous. yeah, and then also I've got uh, Manitoba down the middle of the back of the neck as well. Yeah, gorgeous. So that pulls it all visually together. When it comes to a point that's called a Florentine cutaway, and when it comes around in a continuous loop, that's a uh, Venetian cutaway. And uh, I've just not, you know, I just haven't moved forward on it. So what are you working on now? Uh, well, the, the next guitar to go out the door is this one. So this one is about halfway through the finishing. So you can see it's... There's uh, still a few open pores in here, so I'm working on building up the finish to the point where all these pores disappear. Is that with the French polishing? No, this one is, uh, is lacquer. Buddy Tony, who is the bass player from our old garage band when we were kids, this is his guitar. And, are you uh, helping and him? Or are you counseling him? or what do I you am um, basically giving him pointers and counseling him, but a lot of the hard jobs I've actually done. Yeah. So, like shaping this armrest, for example, and then... The last time he was here, we put on this binding strip, so mm -hmm. now it needs to be trimmed mm -hmm. and shaped and scraped off the top. And then all these other ones here, these are the further binding to go on this one. So the, the finishing is already on the top, but not on the sides? How does that work? 
Um, when this is put on into these uh, strips here, you actually have to tape it on mm -hmm. or use binding that goes all the way around. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, if in my case I'm using tape, and that pulls the grain off when you take the tape off. Mm -hmm. So I've um, put a French polish layer on here simply just to protect the wood. As you're working on it. As I'm working on it. This is an electric... So, so this is a, um, basically it's a Telecaster knockoff, like a Fender Telecaster. Mm -hmm. And just like a normal Tele, it's got a swamp ash back. But this is a really beautiful swamp ash back. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it mirrors on both sides, so the seam is right down the center. Mm -hmm. Now I put a Macassar ebony cap on it, and this is also book matched. And then I'm going to mate that up with a stunning flame maple neck. Really nice straight grain on it. And then it's got a bird's eye flip, uh, maple neck or a fretboard on here. Yeah. So that needs to be fitted together. And then you can see, I mean, that's it's going to be. So, and and hypothetically, what would this kind of guitar cost? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. If you were to buy a, a, a high-end Fender Tele, mm -hmm. you're talking upwards around 1500 bucks. Yeah. And uh, I think this should be, you know, in the high end anyways. Easily up there, yeah. Now, the other thing that I'm doing that's going to be totally different yeah. is this neck is actually going to get glued in place and get carved smooth down in the back here. Yeah. And uh, much the way that this neck is. So here, um, mm -hmm. see that's all carved in there. Now, this happens to be a through neck. This is all one piece all the way through. Mm -hmm. Nine different species of wood all across the top. The bridge goes here. This has got a Tele style bridge. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tele pickups here, a Gibson style P90 in the middle, plus a Fishman transducer pickup or uh, um, uh, bridge. Mm -hmm. So, this guitar is going to have electric as well as acoustic sounds coming off it, and then four rocker switches go in here. And then from there, volumes for the electric and the acoustic parts, and it actually goes off to two amplifiers to a stereo. Amp setup. So this is kind of a show-off piece though, don't you think? This is a real show-off piece. Yeah. Then the other thing is I was talking about set necks. Yeah. So you can see how this is all carved through. So what I do is even if I'm using a different style of wood from the body, mm -hmm. it all gets carved completely smooth in here. So and your finger... Is that what you're using the rest and the files for? All that carving, yeah, yeah. all of this. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.